Hello. Today I'm going to talk about speaker setup and different types of sound, particularly monaural sound, stereo sound, and surround sound. So monaural sound is pretty simple. You have one channel, one sound, one speaker, or maybe multiple speakers, but you don't have any way to make the sounds come from any place other than the speaker, or if you have two equal speakers, somewhere in between the speakers. However, there is one thing you might want to do, and if that is if you have a large venue where you have sound that you want to be able to be heard throughout the venue, there's a little trick you can pull to make this sound just a little bit better than if you don't pull the trick. And I'll talk more about this in a moment, but let's say you've got a job at a resort and your job is to set up a speaker system outdoors so that there's some mood music playing all the time as people walk around the resort. So here's a sidewalk, a little sinuous sidewalk walking through the resort, and you need to place speakers every once in a while along the sidewalk. Now what you could do is simply wire these speakers. Let's just draw some wires here. There's two wires there. I'm going to draw black and red. The black wire and a red wire. So there's a black wire to there, to there, to there, and to there. And then the red wire is going to go to here, then to there, then to there, then to there. I'm leaving some gaps so I can do some erasing. What's going to happen here is as you walk along the path, you're going to hear the sound come from this speaker. Then as you walk by, you're going to hear the sound traverse across to that speaker. So when you get around here, you're going to hear the sound probably around here. As you get between them, you're going to hear the sound halfway between. As you get here, you're going to hear the sound over there. And as you get here, you're going to hear the sound from that speaker. And that doesn't really set the mood. You're going to be listening to that sound and noticing that and say, yeah, there's a speaker there and you're going to hear that sound. What you want to do is make this so you can't really tell where the sound is coming from. There's a simple trick you can use to do that. So let's go ahead and erase these wires in between. Actually, I'm going to leave those. Oh yeah, I'll go ahead and erase them. There we go. Now what we're going to do is send our wires to the first speaker, just like we did. And then we're going to cross over to the second speaker. So. Here comes the red wire out, and we're going to cross over that way. Now what's going to happen is as I walk up here, I can't really tell where the sound is coming from because the sounds are out of phase. This speaker, the cone is moving this way, and the other speaker, the cone is moving the opposite way. So as the sounds are made, the cones are fighting each other. The sounds are out of phase, and my auditory system can't tell where the sound is really coming from. So instead of hearing it here, and then hearing the sound migrate between the two speakers as I go, I'm going to hear the sound kind of generally in this area here. And as I walk along, that little that area is going to kind of walk with me. And I can't really tell where the sound is coming from. So I just keep reversing that phase every time I go from one speaker to the other. Just like that. And that's going to make that sound just kind of move along with me instead of being situated in a particular place that's going to attract my attention. So that's something tricky to do with monaural sound if you have such a venue to do that. How often do you do that? Oh, I don't know, but I was at a resort and I noticed that. And every once in a while I'd find a place where they goofed, where somebody wired the speakers in parallel, or should I say in phase, and so I would notice it every time I'm walking along, I hear the music and then I get here and suddenly I can hear that music go from this speaker and then go across to that speaker and then I hear it fade off again. And I guess it's the nerd in me was catching that. Maybe other people wouldn't even notice, but it was driving me nuts every time I went across one of those because I could hear that sound sounding different. So most of the speakers were wired correctly, but every once in a while they forgot to do that crossover. So that's something you can do with monaural sound that's a little different than maybe you ever thought of. The next thing, of course, is stereo sound, and that's pretty simple. You just have two independent channels. Now, I talked a little bit about stereo when talking about microphones, so I'm not going to have to say too much about that. But basically, you just have two channels. I 
talk about recording the symphony orchestra. So there's your stage with your symphony orchestra on there. Of course, you could have other types of musical groups. And uh, it's if you're a recording engineer, there's different things you need to know about the different types of groups, but uh, I'm not going to go into that. And of course, the idea is that we want the instruments over here in the speakers. I'll put speakers down here. So here's our recording venue. Here's our playback venue. We want sounds over there to sound like they're over here, sounds over here to sound like they're over here, and sounds in the middle to sound like they're in the middle. And that's pretty simple because we just simply record two channels and send those two channels to the speakers. And if everything is set up right, if we have the volume even in the two channels and the phasing correct, that's exactly what we will hear. And in this case, we want the opposite of what I just showed in the monaural system. We want these speakers to be wired so that they work in phase. So I'm just going to draw my red and my black wires there. And so the idea is that if the sound is equal in both speakers, we want both those speaker cones working together. We don't want them working opposite because what's going to happen? Just like the other venue, if they're opposite, you can't tell where the sound is coming from. So if we have a soloist in the middle here, we want to hear that soloist there. And if our speakers are phased correctly, that's exactly what we should hear. But if we reverse the phase on one of these speakers, that soloist will sound like it's everywhere between the speakers. You can't really tell where it's coming from. So that's where we want the phasing to be the same is when we are using a stereo system. Or you may have multiple speakers if you have a surround sound system. Let's talk about that for a moment. So what you would have there typically would be four speakers. So here's your listening sofa four speakers, two in the back and two in the front, and that was your surround sound. But when DVDs came along, Dolby developed a scheme of digitally encoding five channels into the DVD data stream. Not very hard, you just squeeze more data into a smaller area. Of course, a DVD can carry video and plenty of audio channels, so there is no problem with that. So your DVD is going to have digital audio as well as digital video, and that digital audio can contain up to five channels. So your regular player would only pick up two of those channels, but if you had a 5.1 surround player, it would pick up all five of those. And of course, those channels would be your two front channels, your two rear channels, plus a center channel. Oh, and it's called 5.1. I mentioned that before because that 0.1 represents having a subwoofer somewhere. Uh, we'll hide that behind the sofa here. Remember, the subwoofer can go anywhere because you can't tell where those low frequency sounds are coming from. So we have the four speakers around here to uh, define the direction the sounds are coming from, or five speakers because we have the center speaker over the TV, which brings voice sounds into the TV better, and then a subwoofer somewhere else. Remember, these all have to be in phase for it to work, but we already talked about that. And I've seen sound cards for computers with 7.1 surround sound, so that would have six channels plus a center channel and yet a subwoofer. And if you have a subwoofer with just regular stereo, they call that, guess what? 2.1 stereo. So that in a nutshell is a little bit about monaural sound, just simply one channel, one speaker or multiple speakers. And the little trick I told you about, if you need to have a monaural sound in a venue where you want just a background sound, you don't want people to know where it's coming from, remember to flip those wires every speaker as you go along. It, it works very well. And for stereo, just basically two speakers. And you might have a subwoofer. That would be 2.1 stereo. And then we have several surround sound schemes. And then when the DVDs came out, Dolby came out with the 5.1 digital surround sound. That is not at all uncommon today. So if you found this useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up as usual. It really helps the channel and helps other people find these videos. And if you want to learn electronics technology and perhaps become a certified electronics technician or just get a jump start in your studies in electrical engineering, you can go to vocademy.net and take my totally free course. A big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your donations. To help me do this, you can go to patreon.com slash vocademy and pledge your support. And go to Patreon to see the small perks you do get if you pledge a donation. And again, a big thank you to my patrons and other donors. Couldn't do this without your support. And thanks to everyone for watching.